My goodness, you're in God's house. Let's act like it. Amen. Amen. Let's, before we get started, David, would you lead us in a word of prayer, please, sir? Let's pray. Our most gracious Heavenly Father, Lord, we just come to you again tonight, thanking you, Heavenly Father, for another night that we can come to your house and just worship you and praise you and just to sit back and listen to the Holy Spirit to teach us, Heavenly Father. Use our pastor tonight, Lord, as the teacher. And, Heavenly Father, may that Pentecostal fire just... Just jump from his shoes, Heavenly Father, as he walks across this floor. And, Heavenly Father, we know it's going to be good because every time we come to your house, it just gets gooder and gooder. We ask thy blessings upon each and every one that is here. We ask, Heavenly Father, our heads of protection around them when they leave, that we know that you go before us. And, Heavenly Father, to have your way in this, your service. For it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Praise God. Give God a hand. Praise God. Okay, I've got one announcement before we get started because I'm afraid I'll forget to tell you afterwards. As soon as we get done tonight, everybody that can, we're going to take all these chairs, we're going to stack them all, all down the sides of each side of the church for the marriage conference. So everybody can help out after the service. Everybody help us get those chairs stacked. All right? Amen. Come on now. At least one or two can help me. There you go. Praise the Lord. We'll get her done. We'll get her done. Okay, when pastor asked me to preach, I asked, of course, I, like I tell you all the time, I always go to God and say, what do you want me to preach? Because he preaches to me. When I get ready and, and, and I'm preaching to you all or I'm bringing you the message, the message is, comes to me first. Well, right, pastor? The message comes to us first. It does. It comes to us first. And so with that message that comes to me, I get so excited. I get so, I get so built up. Because of what God shows me to bring to you all. And the best thing that happens to me is when God gets on my toes. So I'm getting on some toes tonight. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, but God says don't be. Temptation. Birth pains. Come on, ladies. How many of y'all had birth pains? Raise your hand. Does it get worse as it gets closer? Does it get harder as it gets closer? Do you get mad at your husband when it gets closer? <laughs> birth pains. Jesus said, when the birth pains gets closer, be looking. Be ready. Be ready because that trumpet's getting ready to sound. Those birth pains are so close, it is unreal. And let me tell you how you know. The battle is getting harder. Christians are fighting more to stay where they need to be. It's a, it's a struggle because temptation is there so strong more now than it's ever been known. We're going to talk about things even going back to where Eve sinned and, and allowed sin to come into this world. We're going to start with that here shortly. And then we're going we're gonna to talk about where Jesus was tempted. And what he showed us and how he showed us how we can overcome this temptation that is absolutely getting worse as the birth pains get closer. And, and I'm telling you, we make it so hard. And this is what God showed me. He says, John, you make it so hard. And I, all you got to do is get in the word and see how easy it is to rebuke Satan. How easy it is to just give him scripture. How easy it is to just say no. But yet we want to fight with Satan. We want to battle with him. And all we got to do is rebuke him. That's all we got to do. So temptation. We all have been tempted. How many has been tempted this week? Be honest. And I'm not going to ask you, ask you to raise your hand on this one. How many has gave in to it? Don't raise your hand. I don't want to see it. What I say? Take her to the back corner over. And, and I'm going to be honest. It is. It, I'm glad Jackie raised her hands. But anyway, I'm going to be honest with you. It is so easy to give in as a Christian. How many here is Christians? And we all say we've been tempted, and it's so easy to give in to it because you know what it is? Our eyes like what we see our eyes like what we see 
You know, the trouble is sometimes we want somebody else's things that they got. Has anybody been tempted by somebody buying a new vehicle and you want it? Have you been tempted by somebody that, that has got a real nice house and you wish you could have something similar to that? Huh? Has anybody been tempted about, look at the clothes that person's wearing? I'd like to have some of those. Has anybody been tempted and said, well, wish I had that kind of money? I'm just throwing some things out there. You deal with whatever the Holy Spirit touches you with. Or how come that person gets away with it? Huh? Look what that, listen, that person's done a lot worse than I have. That's temptation when Satan throws that at you. You're already being aggravated or mad because of what that person got away with, and you try to be such a good person. It's temptation. We need to defeat it because the birth pains, guess what? It's not going to quit until it comes. And you ladies know that. Until that child is born, they're not going to stop. They're going to get worse. And that's what's happening while Jesus is getting ready to come back because it's right here at our door, and it's going to be a struggle. And he says, I will help you. I will show you. And he's going to show you tonight. I want you to look at this scripture here. No temptation has overtaken you except what is common to mankind. And God is faithful. He will not let you be tempted beyond what you can bear. But when you are tempted, he will also provide a way out so that you can endure it. That tells me that every temptation comes your way, God's got a door. Every temptation. I don't care if it's looking at a, guys, if it's looking at a pretty woman. There's temptation out there on TV. God gives you a way to close them eyes. You don't have to watch it. You can turn a channel. Let me tell you something. Me and my wife was watching TV last night. And we was watching this show. I'm trying to think of the name of it. Uh, about, it's not, well, I'll get it here. Maybe it'll come to mind. Where all these people get out and do this certain thing. And, and they win uh, the best what is it called? I can't think. My mind's went blank. American, Americans got talent. Thank you, Jackie. Americans got talent. That's how Satan's trying to stop me right now. And he can't do it. But anyway, I've never seen this. I don't know if any of you watched it last night or not. But there's certain things on there I just I turn it off because it's bad. It's awful. But thank God I watched it last night. Because they went out into the, this audience. Now, I've never seen this done before when we watched it in, in past time. They went out to this audience. And they ask different ones, just sing, if you want to sing. And so this one guy raised his hand, and he went over and he sung. He done pretty good. And they had all these other people raise their hand. This little 11-year-old girl raised her hand. And the guy handed her the mic. And she started singing Amazing Grace. How sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. And I never, listen, if you all can get online and go back and check it, you need to watch that part, I promise you. Because it's all about Jesus. Listen, there was thousands of people there. And God took that guy over there that had the mic and gave it to that little 11-year-old girl. I know that had to be God. And she sang that song, just a few verses, just a few words of it. The crowd went crazy. I already had tears in my eyes. And then the, the, one of the judges, the main judge, got up and he says, go up on the stage. And this little young girl, 11 years old, was nervous, and her daddy was sitting there with her, and she goes up on the stage. And I, know, I knew right then, David, this was a testimony. This was a testimony. This girl had a test. I knew it. And she got up on the stage, and she started crying. And tears running down her face. This wasn't even planned. She wasn't even supposed to be up there. And they asked her a few questions. And she said, well, my dad back there has had cancer for like six years. Six years he's had this cancer. And it was really bad and, and, and things going on in his life. And, of course, the whole, the whole everybody out there, the thousands of people, plus the judges, and me and Mary was just sitting there crying, tears in her eyes. And as we sat there, they asked the little girl, said, would you please sing that song all the way through? So she sung a, the first 
verse of Amazing Grace. I, I have never in my entire life heard that song sung like that to touch people like it did. And so when she got through, they said, go ahead and sing another verse of it. And, and of course, you know what the word says, Amazing Grace, how sweet the sound. It saved a wretch like me. Listen, there was people in that audience I really believe that got saved because what God allowed to happen with that little girl. And, and the next thing I know, they said, where's your daddy at? And they pointed, but he came up there. And this is, this is the testimony of the little girl. But the daddy got to share it. And he says, they asked him how he was doing. He said, I'm, I'm doing real good now with my cancer. And, and, you know, he's getting over it and everything's going good. And he says, let me tell you about my daughter, oh. Ever since I had cancer, she would come. How She learned how to sing Amazing Grace and different songs. She would come to the hospital and sit at my hospital bed and sing those songs to me. That's how she learned how to sing Amazing Grace to her daddy to sing that. You need to turn and watch that if you can. Because I guarantee you, blessing. there's parts that me and my wife turned off. There was parts we turned off because we wouldn't watch it. Because there's, there's also bad things on TV. And God gives you the opportunity to take that plunger that you got and turn that channel or turn it off. You don't have to watch it. Temptation is out there. And I'm just show, sharing that with you because of what the temptation is. And we see it every day. We're living in a world that is nothing but evil. And God says, if you live in this world, listen, you better check yourself. Now, you physically live here, but if you spiritually live in this world, you better examine yourself because this world belongs to Satan right now, and I don't want no part of it. I have to live in it, but I don't have to live spiritually in it. Amen? Let's talk about the first sin. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food and that it was pleasant to the eyes and a tree to be desired to make one wise. She took of the fruit thereof and did eat and gave also unto her husband with her, and he did eat. We had a world that was no temptation in it. We had a world that had two people in it, and everything in it was wonderful. God looked at it as he created and says he was pleased with what he created. He was pleased even with man. He was pleased with woman. Until Satan come and made the woman look at something with her eyes that pleased her. Right there is where it says it, it pleased her as she looked upon it. It was something that she desired. How many of us look upon something that we know we shouldn't but we desire it? Huh? Birth pain is getting closer. They're going to get harder. Temptation is going to get worse. What are you going to do about it? What if she had stepped back and told the devil, I've got all these other trees that my God gave me. And that's all I need. We'd be in a different time right now, wouldn't we? Huh? We wouldn't be where we're at now, would we? With those birth pains. But she didn't. And, you know, and again, I blame Adam more than I do Eve. He was the man of the house, wasn't he, pastor? He was the man of the house. He should have rebuked her right then when she says, take a bite of this. He should have stopped it. Listen, man, stand up and be the godly man that God's called us to do. If your wife tells you something that's not right and you, it is not in Scripture, stand up and be the man that God's called you to be. There's so many times there's a lot of women it has to be the men of the house. It's a lot of times that, that the, the, the woman is the father and the mother. And it's sad. But we're living in those times. This, this generation, church, I tell you all the time when I preach, it's the generation that God chose us to be here. What are we doing about it? We need to defeat this temptation. We need to defeat everything that comes. Temptation is going to be there all the time. Until we're raptured out of here, you're going to be tempted. But we got the power and authority, and I'm going to show you what we can do about it. Quit looking at things you don't need to look at. Amen? Turn that TV off. Quit looking at 
And listen to me, ladies. I hope there's some listening. Quit showing yourself. I'm serious. Quit showing yourself. I think you're going to answer to God if you're out there showing stuff that you shouldn't be showing. God's going to, you're going to stand before him. He's going to ask you why. I don't know what you're going to say. I have no idea. That's between you and God. But why have to have him ask you that? Why don't you do something about it now? Quit showing yourself. It's worse now than it's ever been known. You know, I, I do lift up the homage to you. Because those women wear dresses all the way to their feet. They do. Be careful. Now, I'm going to really get on some toes. God's going to hold you accountable and me accountable for how our children dress. Are they out there tempting this younger generation? Listen, it's, it's, it's hard to be a youth right now. It's hard to be a teenager. I thank God that mine's already grown up, but I've got grandkids. And it's hard because the temptation out there is so, these phones are pitiful sometimes. What are we going to do? What are we teaching our kids? Thank God we got classes in church to teach them. Thank God we got teachers for the youth. Thank God we got teachers for the young adult classes. We've got to, a lot of work ahead of us. Again, I'm going to say it again. I'll probably say it more. Birth pains are getting really close. And Satan knows it. So he's going to tempt you more. He's going to tempt you more. Let's don't be like Eve. Let's don't, let's don't desire it. Temptations of Jesus. Jesus was human and he was God. But he's going to show you how strong he was during his temptations. He's going to show you why he was God, why he was Jesus, why he was the Holy Spirit. He's going to show you here, just right here in this scripture I'm getting ready to show you. Matthew 4, 3 through 7. And when the tempter came to him, he said, If thou be the Son of God, command that these stones be made bread. He just got through fasting. He was hungry. Anybody here ever fast more than three days? You get hungry. Things look good. Satan, listen to me, and please listen to me. Satan knows your weakness better than you know your weakness. He does. He knows what you've done done. He knows what you desire. He knows what you want, not what you need. Satan does not know. Listen to me. Satan does not know what you need. Only God knows what you need. Satan knows what you want. He knows the desire that's not right that you want. Please do something about it now. Each and every one of us has to, to fight. Even tell our children. Tell our grandkids. Because, listen, we absolutely have a battle ahead of us. A big battle before Jesus comes back and before that trumpet sounds. And we better do something about it. So Jesus was hungry. But listen to what he said. It is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. Then the devil taketh him up into the holy city and setteth him on a pinnacle of the temple and saith unto him, If thou be the Son of God, cast thyself down, for it is written, He shall give his angels charge concerning thee, and in their hands they shall bear thee up, lest at any time thou dash thy foot against the stone. Satan is telling you right now, you're a good Christian person. You got the power and authority to do what you want. You, you can preach whatever you want to preach. Just like he told Jesus, Jesus, you're the son of God. Let me tell you what a Christian needs to do. A Christian needs to humble himself and serve. Humble themselves and serve. Don't put yourself on a pedestal. Jesus could have done whatever the Satan had told him he could have done. He could have called a thousand angels and wiped everything away. But he chose to humble himself like he's trying to teach us right now. See, sometimes as Christians, we get above God. We think, 
You can't do it without me. I had a, had a guy tell me this one time. I was working at the Board of Education. I was a maintenance man there. And, and a good friend of mine that, that was my boss, I went and told him. He wanted me to drive a school bus. And I said, I told him, I said, I didn't take this job to drive a bus. I just don't feel right responsible with a bunch of kids. I said, I took the job as a maintenance man. And he said, well, I'm sorry. That's just what the board says. We're running out of people to drive the bus, so all the maintenance is going to have to start driving. I said, no. I said, I can't. I'm just not, not going to be that responsible. I don't have that responsibility to drive a bunch of kids. That's not what I, this job was chose for when I, when I signed up for it. But anyway, I just, of course, I built, and I went back. I told him, I said, well, I'll give you my two weeks' notice right now. And I told him, I said, I said, I am so sorry because he was such a good friend of mine. After, after all this, I built him a home. But I said, I am so sorry because I know that I put you in a spot because I know that you need maintenance. School is getting ready to start right back. I said, I'm sorry. And he looked at me. He says, John, don't be sorry. Everybody can be replaced. And I was replaced. He told me, he said, you know, he said, I don't know what kind of person will replace you if he knows, has the experience that you have for all these years, but you will be replaced. And that, that, that got a hold of me. That got a hold of me. See, just because I'm a pastor, that don't mean I'm above any of you all. It doesn't. Pastor, it doesn't. It, me and you both, we're one. We're not above nobody. I tell you what, I'd rather wash your feet. If pastor says, John, all I want you to do is come Sunday morning, and I want you to wash everybody's feet. That's all I want you to do. You know what I'll do? I'll bring a mask and gloves, and I'll wash everybody's feet. I, I promise you I'll do it. I'll wash everybody's feet. That's, I mean, I think God wants you to humble yourself. He really does. He wants you to humble yourself, not be above nobody. Listen, if you're, if you're in leadership role, don't, don't be above anybody. Matter of fact, go and clean the commodes. I'm serious. I've cleaned them. Thank God that he allowed me to have a job to clean the commodes at the church. I needed the money. I'll be honest, but I praise him and thank him even today that he gave me that kind of job. Now he's allowed me to be an associate pastor here. That's an honor. But listen, I'm no better than you. A lot of you can preach better than me. A lot of you can know the Bible better than I do. Don't let Satan tempt you to think that you're better than anybody because you got a title. A title is just a name. Listen, do it from your heart. If you've got a title, do it from your heart. Do it from your heart because I guarantee you, you'll be serving yourself and not telling everybody else what to do. Amen? I don't know why God just showed me that. He shall give his angels charge concerning thee, and in their hands they shall bear thee up, lest at any time thou dash thy foot against the stone. Jesus said unto him, It is written again, Thou shalt not tip the Lord thy God. Again, the devil taketh him up into an exceeding high mountain. And showeth him all the kingdoms of the world and the glory of them. And saith unto him, All these things will I give thee, if thou wilt fall down and worship me. Then said Jesus unto him, Get thee hence, Satan, for it is written, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou serve. Amen? Amen. Praise God. Give God a hand for that. that. See, what God is teaching you right here, and a lot of you already know it. But sometimes things we know, we let slip out of our minds sometimes. And we need to be reminded that you only worship one God. And that God is the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And that's the only one you worship. And you rebuke Satan. And let me tell you what God, Jesus, is trying to teach every one of us here. When temptation comes your way, you open up that word. There's a lot of people who's got their Bibles on their phone. But you open up that word, and you find Scripture, and you read that Scripture to Satan. And you tell him no more. Because Jesus, everything that he did, he, he put scripture to him. And Satan cannot, he cannot fight that. He cannot fight, he cannot overpower God's word. There's no way. And he knows that, but he don't want you to know that. He don't want you to know that. He wants you to think that 
I got you. I got you. Temptation, I'm telling you, birth pains is getting closer, church. 1 John 2, 16 through 17 says, For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh. Everybody pat your arm. Come on. That's your flesh, all right? That's you. That's this body. That's your eyes that God gives you to see with. That's your mind that your eyes tells what you see. And then that's your heart. All right? So your eyes, your mind, and your heart. I want you to remember that. The lust of the flesh and the lust of the eyes and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. And the world passes away and the lust thereof, but the, he that doeth the will of God abideth forever. My goodness, God says forever. But it's got to be God's will. This flesh will take you down the wrong path. You've got to be spiritually eyes on Jesus. And if you don't keep your eyes focused, guess what? You're living in the world. Your eyes is where they shouldn't be. Why don't we, why don't we do more for God and less for Satan? Seriously, as Christians, why do we let pride get in our way? Why do we let this flesh get in our way? I know a lot of you sitting there right now, but John, that's just life. That's what Satan's telling you right now. He's telling you right now. I guarantee you, every one of you is thinking that. That's not from God. Why do you think God gave you all the scriptures? Why do you think he gave you the word to use? Why do you think Jesus got tempted? Jesus didn't have to be tempted. He could have overpowered Satan. He, was, he could have said at the very beginning, get behind me. He'd done it for us. So he knew we was weak, and he knew that we needed Scripture. He, we knew, he knew we needed the Word, and we had to use the Word on Satan to defeat him. And that's why Jesus went through what he went through. Why did Jesus go to the cross? He knew that we would never be able to save ourselves. We'd all be in hell. So he sent Jesus, his son, to be tempted. And he overcome the temptation. He never sinned. He was perfect. Then he took him to the cross, and he never gave up. He, he went all the way to it was finished. And he's coming back again. Me and Charles was talking about it. He's talking, preaching again on the end times in there. And I get excited when I hear about the end times. And I told him, I said, I can't wait till I'm on that white horse, and I'm coming back, and we're going to defeat Satan for the last and final time. I can't wait. I've already named my horse as Trigger. I'm serious. Yeah, I'm coming back on my white Trigger, and I'm going to defeat him. We're going to put him where he belongs. I'm going to be right behind Jesus. And listen, come on, church. We got to get excited. We got to get. We got to quit wearing. Listen to me. Ever since I know you probably get tired of me saying this, but I got to be obedient. Ever since 2020 happened, Satan has. It's took Christian people and split them. And then once he split them, he started working. Tell me the truth. Since 2020, has Satan worked on you? Has he made fear come on you? Has he made weary come up on you? Has he made you think, well, what are we going to do when gas prices get higher? What are we going to eat? My goodness, look at the Word of God. Don't worry about tomorrow. You're being tempted. Quit being tempted. Stand hard on God. Stand, stand strong on Him. He can't do nothing. Listen, there's, listen, honestly, faith overrides fear. Say that. Come on. Faith overrides fear. One more time. Faith overrides fear. So why get fearful? Why worry? Why? We need to be the generation that God's called us to be, church. And he's called this generation to stand strong. One woman, one woman took all the Bibles out of school and all over the public. One woman did that. And here there's thousands and thousands of Christians that sit and let churches be closed. And I'm guilty. And let all this pandemic come around and get fearful. Listen, I've, I've had it. I've had the 
virus. I was sick, deadly sick with it. But I quit letting fear override my faith. Now my faith overrides my fear because I know that Jesus is coming back and I know that I'm going to be here and I'm going to be raptured out of here. He's done show that to me, Pat. He has. So be honest about it. Rebuke him and quit worrying about what's going to happen tomorrow. If gas prices go to $20 a gallon, I'll ride a donkey to church. I've got them. I'm serious. Y'all think I'm full. I, I, I guarantee you I would. I don't have to drive a vehicle. How many times did Jesus ride? Somebody tell me something. How many times did Jesus get in a car and truck and ride from town to town? And he was in good health because he was Jesus and he was human, but he was in good health. You never heard Jesus being sick. Maybe we all need to start walking a little bit. Maybe we all start need, started letting some things go. How many times have we been worried about groceries? Getting higher, they're getting higher. I hear that all the time. Getting higher. How are we going to survive? Get in the Word. Get in the Word. He'll tell you how to survive. See, Christian people are worrying. Christian people are the ones, listen to me, the generation that God chose are the ones that's got the problem that because of all this happening, they're saying, what are we going to do? What are we going to do? How many of you have a relationship with Jesus? Huh? If you've got a relationship with Jesus, you know what to do. You start praying. I, th this really happened to me. We, me and my wife was heading to Taylorsville. So I had, I, was in a, I had a trailer. I was going to pick up a, a truck. And I, I stopped at this gas station at Taylorsville. And I had my gooseneck trailer on the back of it. And I was parked there getting fuel. And, and on the other side, there was a lady getting fuel. And she walked around my the gas pump and she says you care if I walk in between your truck and trailer because my trailer was long she's gonna have to walk all the way around I said well, no but just don't hit your head be careful so she walked and she come back and when she come back I was still getting fuel in my truck and she says what are we gonna do I didn't know what she's talking about I said do what what are we gonna do you know it cost me $75 just to put a little fuel in my car what are we gonna do I said pray we need to pray I, can't, I haven't got no answer for the fuel, but i got to an answer what we do. We pray to God. If I ask you, and I'm not going to ask you how many people still set your, your phones and let the thing go off and, and take time to stop and pray and ask God. I do this every night. I'm not bragging on myself, but I'm going to keep doing it till Jesus raptures me out of here. My phone goes off at 8 o'clock every night. If you don't believe me, stay here at 8 o'clock or I'll stay here with you and it'll go off. And I stop and pray. And I ask God to heal this land. And I'm not going to quit. And, and I know a lot of you sitting there thinking right now, but God, John, all this has got to happen. Listen, God says, if my people that's called by my name will humble themselves, seek my face, and pray, and turn from their wicked ways, then I will heal their land. He's telling his Christian people to do that right now. How many of us is doing it as Christians? Don't raise your hand because I think we'd be embarrassed. I know it got quiet in here. And I told you it was a hard message. It always is. It seems like that, that Jesus always gives me a hard message. And I know pastor feels this the same way sometimes. He don't want to preach it. Because you think it's us. It's not us. It's Holy Spirit. You can get mad at me all you want. But it's Holy Spirit. Why aren't we doing what the word says? It says for us to do that. We, we say, well, yeah, but it, all this has got to happen, John. It's just got to, this is part of God's plan. God's plan is also to pray. Humble ourselves and pray. And ask what he tells us to ask for. And trust whatever he gives us. I tell you what, go out there to my farm. My grass is growing, the crops is growing, everything's, he's blessing me to no end. And I'm not saying it because of me, because I'm doing what he told me to do. He's healing my land out there. How many of y'all want your land healed? See, we look at the wrong thing. He's wanting to bless you. He's wanting to bless you. He's wanting to prosper you. That's what he's doing. 
Listen, when the groceries ain't no more, God will provide. You start praying and believing what his word says, he'll provide. He'll give it to you. He wants you to have the best. He don't want you to suffer. Satan wants you to. He don't want you to. First John 1, 8 through 10 says, If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar and his word is not in us. See, I want you to know this. Temptation is coming and we're going to mess up. And the Bible tells me that I sin every day. As a Christian, listen to me, as a Christian, I'll put myself under the bus. John does something every day somewhere he shouldn't do. He might overeat. I mean, there's different things in my life. I overwork. Yes. I, I, I'll be honest about it. I overwork. There's things that, listen, if, and, and don't take this wrong, but I'm just being obedient. If you come to church just to become to church, and it's not to, to, to fellowship and, and listen to what God comes, you're just coming to, to say, I come to church, then you sin. You come to church to hear what God has got for you and then be obedient to it. If you listen to Jesus, he will show you everything. But let me tell you who's on your other shoulder. Satan. And you get so, so confused sometimes you don't know if it's Jesus or Satan. Well, when that happens, guess what? You need to get in the Word and get in the Word quick. Because I'm telling you, Jesus is not confusion. Satan is. So be careful. You get in God's word and you start listening to what that word says. You start being obedient. And you start listening to God's will, not Satan's will. So each and every one of us admits we sin, we messed up. But I want you to know all your sins, if you're truly a Christian and you ask Jesus in your heart, and you already know what I'm going to say and you already know the answer, but I'm going to tell you anyway because some of us forget. But if you truly ask Jesus in your, your heart, then your sins, your past sins, your present sins and your future sins has been washed away with Jesus' blood. As far as east is from the west, never remember them again. But let me tell you this. When we still mess up here on earth, when we still mess up and we sin, there's consequences. There's consequences. When pride gets in the way, guess what? There's going to be consequences. When you say something that you sh wish you hadn't have said, you wish you could take that toothpaste and put it back in, and you can't, there's consequences. There's consequences in everything that you do wrong. Jesus says, I don't want you. He says, I want you to stay focused on me and, not, and try not to sin. Try not to sin. I think we can do better each and every day of our life. I know the Bible says we sin, but wouldn't it be great that when we know that 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 temptation is coming is to automatically stop right there and just start praying. I don't care if 20 people's look. I don't care if you're at work. God, please stop this temptation right now. I rebuke it. Open that door. I'm going through it. Turn around and walk away. That's what we need to do. Every one of us need to do that. Because we all since got through sin, we've been, that we sin, we mess up every day, and temptation is there. He opened that other door. He's got a door there for you. Go through it. Let's be the chosen one that he's chosen. Let's stand up and be obedient, church. Let's be the church that God is coming back to get. And I know we are. We are the ones. We are the ones when that trumpet sounds, he's coming back. Open arms. Listen to me. You're getting ready to be raptured out here pretty soon. I'm, I'm being honest. I'm telling you, it's getting ready to happen because there's no way that those birth pains is going to keep going this way it's about over so let's 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 just get right with god right now let's do what he tells us amen acts 5 1 through 4 but a certain man named ananias this is a story this is a true story now everything in the bible is true but this is one that this is after jesus had done been sent to heaven went done ascended back to heaven and this I want you to listen to this. There's a lot of people think that 
God still don't do nothing bad. He won't, he won't take nobody's life. He won't, he, won't, uh, he won't spank you, David. There's a lot of Christian people think, no, my sins has all been forgiven, and God won't spank you. Let's read this. But a certain man named Ananias with Sapphira's wife sold a possession and kept back part of the price. His wife also being private to it and brought a certain part and laid it at the apostles' feet. But Peter said, Ananias, why has Satan filled thine heart to lie to the Holy Ghost, Holy Spirit, same thing, and to keep back part of the price of the land? Why has it remained? Was it not thine own? And after it was sold, was it not in thine, thine own power? Why hast thou conceived this thing in thine heart? Thou hast not lied unto men, but unto God. Let me tell you what happened to Ananias. The ghost come upon him and took him. God took him, took the ghost out of him, took the spirit out of him, and he died right then. And his wife come and told the same lie. You read it yourself. His wife come and told the same lie. Boom. God took her too. So what makes us any better than them? You better be careful how you quench the spirit of God. You better be careful how you lie to the Holy Spirit. I'm telling you the truth. God loves you that much that he's not going to leave you in chosen time to hurt the thing that he's getting ready to do. So anybody listen to me on Facebook right now, I'm telling you, be careful. Be careful. I'm looking at everybody. Be careful. Be careful how you do to the Holy Spirit. God forbids it. God forbids it. Be careful. He loves you that much. Now listen, you won't lose your salvation, but you might be taken out of here. You might be taken out of here. I know I got awful quiet, Pastor. What can we do? Question. What can we do with all what all I've done showed you about temptation and everything I've showed you? What can we do about it? I've kind of told give you some little illustrations as a win, but let me go to scripture. We're getting ready to close out. It won't be long. Acts 8, 22, repent. Say that with me. Repent on the count of three. One, two, three. Repent. What's repent mean? Amen. Y'all listening and learning. I told you some of you could preach better than me. Repent. Turn from it. Stop doing things that's not of God. Again, as I told you, take that thing and turn it off if you got something on TV you shouldn't watch. Turn your phones off if something pops up on there. I'd rather you throw your phone away than have temptation take your body over. I would. I'd rather you would. Everybody stand up. First John 1, 7 through 9. But if we walk in the light, as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another. And the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all sin. If we say that we have no sin, what? Listen, church. We deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Sometimes I think as Christians, we think that we know that our salvation is there and we know that we're saved. We know where we're going to be. But we think sometimes when we sin and mess up, well, it's covered. Listen, what's that scripture heard just now say? Ask for forgiveness. Yes, you're saved. You've asked Jesus in your heart, and you're going to be with him when, when that last breath you take, whether you're wrapped or out of here or you take a last breath. But when you mess up right now, let me tell you something. Let me, let me tell you how you know that you're saved. Would anybody in here like to know how they for sure that you're saved? Raise your hand. Praise the Lord. The minute that you take your eyes off of God and you sin, you feel so guilty inside that you've got to fall to your knees and say, God, I'm sorry. I'm sorry for what I did. Please forgive me. I do it all the time, church. 
If I, look, if I go something or I, I do something that's not right, and the Bible says you sin every day, I stop right there. It's God, forgive me. If I get mad at somebody, God, please forgive me. See, when you get mad and angry at somebody, it's a sin. Whoa. God had to shake me several times over that one. I get mad. Look, I, no. God, please keep convict my heart. So if something goes wrong and you sin, you mess up, and you feel awful, and the first thing you want to do is ask Jesus to forgive you, you're saved. You know Jesus Christ is your Lord and Savior because you can't stand it. But if you keep sinning and it don't bother you at all, you need to check yourself. You better get right with God because most likely you don't know who Jesus really is. You know him, but you don't have him right here. You don't have him right here. I promise you. I promise you. If you truly have him here, you'll never lose that. You cannot. Satan cannot snatch anything from God. And that's you. He can't snatch you out of nothing. No man can snatch you out of God's hand. You're saved and you're saved for eternity. But my question is, is there anything in your life tonight that you need to let go? That you need to let, let, let it completely go? If it is, I ask you tonight, come up here at the altar and give it to him. You don't have to come to me. You don't have to come to the elder. You don't have to come to the deacon. You can if you feel like you need to come let somebody pray with you. I'm going to ask the deacons and elders, come on up here. I really feel tonight there's some things in somebody's, some lies that you've been angry You've been upset. You need to let it go. God's showing you. You don't have to listen. <laughs> He's just using me as a tool. I have no clue. I think there's some here tonight that has looked at something they shouldn't look at this week. And you're getting convicted right now. I think there's somebody here tonight that not too sure that you're even saved. I'm not looking around to see who it is. I have no idea. Holy Spirit's not showing me. If he does, believe me, I'll come to you after church and talk to you. But he's not showed me. But he did show me there's somebody here dealing with something right now. And they're not 100% sure if they took their last breath that they'd be with Jesus. That, that would scare me. That would scare me more than anything in the world for me not to know that when I took my last breath, I wouldn't be with my Savior. My prayer is tonight, if it's anything that you need to give up, please tonight you don't have to tell us about it give it to God he's the only one needs to know he might be telling you to go to somebody and say I'm sorry for what I did to you and that person that you're even telling to might not even know what you're talking about but God knows and you know maybe somebody here right now says I need to I need to confess something to one of my elders one of my brothers and let you pray for me please be obedient be obedient. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, I don't know what else to say. Everything I've said, I know is from you, Lord. So I guess you want me just to hush and let you take over for sure to, as the Spirit is moving right now, Lord. So I, my prayer is, Lord, have your way. And that's all I need to say in Jesus' name. Amen.